Okay, so generally speaking, uh, if we're going to uh, write the formula for this using Lebni's rule, like we said on this previous question, you know, the, the, the sum of the derivatives have to always add up to, one, to 9 here. And uh, one derivative goes up, the other derivative goes down. And uh, so here, the sum of the derivatives will be n. So, so if I start on this, uh, d, so this is the nth derivative with respect to x of u v. Okay, and so I will, I'll take the zeroth derivative of u, which means no derivative, times the nth derivative of the second. times v. And I could divide this if I want by 0 factorial because they start, the, 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 they're going to start building up the, the, you will see that the coefficients will be the binomial coefficients. Uh, but 0 factorial is 1, so it doesn't matter. And then on the next step, I can bring the n down. And now the u derivative will go up by 1 and the v derivative will go down by 1. So now I will take the first derivative of u and the nth minus 1 derivative of v, such that the, tot the sum of the derivatives will still equal to n because 1 plus n minus 1 will equal n and over 1 factorial, which is 1. And now I can keep on going, so I will continue here. So plus... Okay, so now I bring the n minus 1 down, so this becomes n times n minus 1 over, so now I'm an, on 2 factorial, and the uh, u derivative goes up by 1, so this is d, the second derivative of u now, and the v derivative goes down by 1, so this becomes n minus 2 with respect to x of v. Again, the sum of the derivatives is n. And I keep on, on building this scenario. So if I do the third one, uh, I bring the n minus 2 down. So this will be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial. And now it's the third derivative of u. Uh, this is dx, dx cubed. And then this is the nth minus 3 derivative of v. And you can see how the coefficients in this are actually the binomial coefficients, like we said. And then if I keep on doing this, so now the pattern is kind of clear, eventually... Uh, when I run out, so n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, eventually uh, I will get to n, uh, and then uh, d, n minus 1, so 3, so that's the youth derivative, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to n minus, I'll write the term before the last one dx n minus 1, that's for u, and there's one derivative remaining, that of v, to make the total derivatives n, so d over dx of v, and on the last term, you know, on the last term, uh, there won't be any um, n's left, uh, the the v derivative will be a zero derivative, which means v. Zero derivative means no derivative. And the entire n derivatives will be on the u now. Okay. And... Um, and so on. Uh, so uh, so this would be the last term. 
So that's how you could, uh, uh, you know, uh, combine these and uh, apply the Leibniz rule to uh, to uh, to get all the derivatives involved. Now, the the way that this would simplify things is, like I told you here on when I gave the example, when you get to the second derivative of x, it will be zero, and this whole thing will go away, and every everything else goes to zero because second, third, fourth, fifth derivative of x will all be zero, and you, you'll just be left with this guy here to evaluate that. So that's why that this is helpful. Um, you see? Uh, oh, and uh, the, uh, by the way, the reason that you get... Uh, 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 The uh, yeah, we we already mentioned that. So so that's kind of the idea. That's how we extend this using the uh, Leibniz rule. Questions so far. <laughs>